Banned political activist Laura Loomer is running for Congress. Welcome back, Andrew says. I wouldn't lie to you except for maybe this once, but Laura Loomer, I don't know. Here's the headline. Far-right activist Laura Loomer announced her candidacy for Florida's 21st congressional district in the 2020 election on Friday. We have to call her far right here. I'm not sure why. I think you need to qualify a statement like that if you're going to say such a thing. Otherwise, you're not really news. You're not really a journalist. You're an opinion writer. Moving on, however, <laughs> Loomer, 26, is registered to run as a Republican against the incumbent Democratic Representative Lois Frankel, according to a filing with the FEC. Frank represents a heavily Democratic district and did not face a challenger in 2018. Running Loomer's campaign, Trump's 2016 Florida State Director, Karen Giorno. FL21 is a blue district based in Palm Beach County, home to Trump's winter getaway club, Mar-a-Lago. Here is Palm Beach County on the Florida map. Now, it seems to me that Loomer has very strategically picked her position here. She's got the woman running her campaign, Giorno. She's got to be pretty good. No one thought Florida would that be big, would be as big as it was for Trump. And it turned out they won it, and she's getting support too. Congress people, uh, news hosts. Here's just a couple of them: Congressman Paul Gozar. I fully endorse Laura Loomer in her quest for Congress. She has proven herself to be an army of one and embodies fearlessness. Army of <laughs> an army of one embodies fearlessness. These sound like uh, indie video games for. Xbox 360 or something. Then, according to Mediaite, a Fox News host gave support for Loomer and quickly withdrew it. Fox News host fundraises for Laura Loomer, the anti-Muslim troll running for Congress again. Is this journalism? The anti-Muslim troll? You just get to make these statements and they're fact? I don't think so. Quote, Fox and Friends Weekend host Pete Hegseth, a dedicated Trump booster and informal advisor to the president, posted a tweet fundraising for the alt-right candidate's campaign. See see what I mean about people saying they're journalists when they're not journalists? This is exactly what I'm talking about. Two things wrong with that quote there. Laura Loomer, not alt-right. How do I know this? What do you think of when you think of alt-right? You think of white nationalism. You think of anti-Jewish stuff. Laura Loomer, very Jewish, supporter of Israel. So there's a problem there. An informal advisor to President Trump, but that's not a real thing. That's them saying that this Fox News host talks about things Trump should do, and, and Trump listens to the Fox News host. That's who he goes to. That's his unofficial advisor. That's not a real thing. This is media bias claiming that Trump li listens to Fox. Really bad writing. Here's the tweet, which was recently deleted, it looks like. Luckily, a resident CNN scumbag <laughs> thought to save it, and of course... He did. Now, somebody from the New York Times, Michael Barbero, responds to it. You host a popular morning news show that covers both political parties. This breaches every ethics rule in journalism. See, the disconnect we have here, just like the two articles, or sorry, the two quotes from articles that I just showed you, is we're all supposed to pretend that we don't have bias. We're all supposed to pretend to be journalists, even when we're not, according to the New York Times. Look to this guy tweet, tweeting, New York Times, Washington Post, clear bias, we're going to pretend that we don't have one. So why is Loomer doing this, you guys? I have a theory. And to hear that theory, you must donate to me on Patreon. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Just a good good excuse to tell you to support me, patreon.com slash Andrew says. At the bottom of your screen, you need to do so to fight the globalists, to fight everybody else, to fight InfoWars. But Laura Loomer, to me, you guys, has two big lanes that she's running in, and this is why I think she's doing what she's doing. Her two big lanes being against Islamic extremism and the other one, her being censored and banned across most social media platforms. Now, I think she chose Palm Beach for a few reasons. The person she's running against has no opponent, okay? So right away, you're in, the, in, your, you're in pole position against your opponent. She immediately steps in and is the representative for Democrats, who pro or sorry, for Republicans, who probably think that there's no chance there. If there's no one running there, it's probably because they think they have no chance. Unlike in Canada, there's no conservative party in BC because they know they would stand no chance. mar -a -Lago is there. That likely means there's some big donors that like Trump there, hanging out his resort. Trump probably visits there. Good place for her to get into. If she wins, she'll get into this club. Being a big Trump supporter, she'll get money, she'll get access, she'll get information, which is the real power, isn't it? So I think the first thing she goes in 
on everybody for if she gets into Congress. That's a big if. I have no idea. I mean, people thought Tommy Robinson was going to win in Europe. Sargon of Akkad, they didn't. But I think if she wins, the first thing she goes after people for is the Facebook, Instagram, Twitter censorship and pushes the rhetoric around conservative bias on social media. I think that's what people would want her to do, and I think that's what she would do. She'll try to get her back on herself. She'll try to get InfoWars back on InfoWars, and with the right support, she could do that. Now, how do I think that she's going to get herself back on? Because if she's running for Congress, she could arguably make the inference that people blocking her on social media, or, sorry, stopping her from being on these platforms, is a form of political censorship. You, it, it writes itself. Twitter is blocking me from going in my, presenting my campaign, presenting my platform to people, and therefore they're meddling in an election. You could make that claim. I don't necessarily agree with it, but does the law say that you can make this argument? I don't know. The argument for President Trump is that they think people should have to be able to hear him or should be able to hear him even if he goes against their terms of service, which I don't believe he does. The second thing I think she'll try to do if she gets into Congress, she's going to go up against the squad. She's going to go up against Ilhan Omar. She's going to, get, going to go up against Rashida Tlaib. Those two specifically, why? She was one of the first people to talk about Ilhan Omar allegedly being married to her brother. Second of which, yours truly. That's why it's got so many views on it. Uh, she even made a video confronting Omar and Tlaib where Rashida Tlaib tries to take her camera, as if this is a person in... <laughs> this is what a person in government should be doing when facing hard questions, is try to steal this person's camera. Take a look. Palestinian Muslim? I'm so sorry. Are you willing to... No, oh, I can tell. Oh. I actually like people Are you like her? Yes. Yeah. Rashida, are you willing to admit as a congresswoman that Hamas is a terrorist organization? Okay. I really need to know that if this woman we, is going well, to be elected to Congress, if she's, asking. She it's is a serious be elected question. To I heard about her. Yeah. Uh, no, she, heard she likes stocks and stuff. Now, as you likely already know, these are two Muslim women in government who expressed disdain for Israel and the policies and America's support for it. Umar is the exact opposite in the fact that she's already gone after them in the past. I think it'd be safe to say that they'd be at, at odds with one another. Now, in terms of going out and getting things done, you have to applaud Loomer on this. She's always been a person who goes out and tries to force people to get, force people to answer questions she wants answered. Do I agree with her tactics? Most of the time, no. Do I agree with what she says? Again, probably most of the time, no. But you have to admire, in a sense, that a person who's not seeing the change they want seen is going in and doing it themselves. How many Facebook photo albums have been named Be the Change That You Want to See in the World? How many girls have tattoos of that across their ribs? And, I don't know, some lonely guys as well. <laughs> Let me know what you guys think. What do you think of Laura Loomer? Why do you think she's running? And what do you think she's going to do if she gets into office? And why that district? So I've got a lot of questions for you. Please answer them in the comments. And Laura Loomer, really? You think she's going to win? Thank <laughs> you.